In today's Project Spotlight, I'm going to be talking about my lime green Projagi Inspiration quilt. What I made, how I made it, and what I learned. Welcome to Ebita Studio. My name is Elizabeth and I help you make beautiful things with quilting, Projagi, and embroidery. So today's Project Spotlight, I'm going to be talking about this uh, lime green Projagi Inspiration quilt. So this project is one that I made a long time ago. I started it at the end of 2016 and I finished it up in the beginning of 2017. So it's been around for a while, but it's still a project that I really like. So we can see in this picture, this is a full quilt. There are 20 12 inch blocks in it and then it has sashing and a border. So it's a full bed size quilt. And this quilt was inspired by uh, traditional Korean Projagi. And if you look at Korean Projagi designs, often they are random and improv because people just took the scraps that they had and stitched them together. So often they do look pretty modern in their designs. And so that's why it's called Projagi Inspiration because it was inspired by a lot of those designs and shapes that I saw. So this is not a Projagi. It's not a window hanging. It's not a wrapping cloth. This is a traditional Western quilt. So it has a piece layer and then a batting and a backing and it's held together with quilting stitches. Um, so it sometimes gets a little bit confusing because I do also um, talk about Projagi and this isn't, but this is inspired by Projagi in the design itself. Now, when I was making it, I knew that that's what I wanted the design to look like. But I also know personally, I have a lot of difficulty with improv piecing. Um, if you just give me a pile of fabric and say, okay, just randomly stitch them together, that's something I find super challenging. I need to have some kind of a structure, a plan, a pattern. And so I began to think, how can I do improv piecing when I can't do improv piecing? So I developed this technique and I call it controlled improv. And so I actually have a pattern for this because I'm not the only person with that problem. So I have a pattern for this quilt that takes you step by step how to do this. And so in this quilt, each block is unique. It is totally different, but each block is made with the same pieces. So there is a, a plan, there's a recipe for what ingredients you need for each block, and there is a formula for how the pieces are put together. And so um, when you're putting your block together, the most you will have is five pieces that are chosen not randomly, but they're assigned and you have these five pieces and you have to put those five pieces together randomly. And so most people can handle that. Even if you decide I don't wanna have the same color touching or I wanna arrange that, it's only five pieces. So you can arrange five pieces, then arrange another five pieces another, and then there's more and then you put your block together. So each block is totally unique. It looks improv, but there is a plan behind it. So I found that really helpful. The other advantage of it being planned improv is it does give overall balance to the whole quilt because each block is made with the same pieces. So the blocks are balanced with each other. So in this one, I use solid colors. So there's red, orange, teal, purple, and then another lime green. It's a little bit different than what I use for the sashing and the border, but it's another green. And so each block will have those same colors and roughly the same number of pieces of each color. There are minor variations 
but not significant variations. And so I made each of the blocks um, in, and then I laid them out and then that's where when you lay out random blocks and you're trying to see the quilt, there is already balance to the quilt. So I laid them out and then I put them together with this lime green sashing and border. And I really like the lime green. It just gives it a pop. Maybe it's the 80s child in me coming out. Um, but I really like that lime green. And then for the quilting, I began to think about quilting because with this kind of piecing, the improv modern piecing, you don't want quilting that's going to distract from your piecing. Like that's a design that you want to have. And so I decided to do this with matchstick quilting. And matchstick quilting is straight or pretty straight lines really close together. And so you can see there's the straight lines pretty close together. Um, it's about every eighth of an inch or so. I think there's eight lines to the inch. And matchstick quilting, it was a good choice for this because if you have a few lines of quilting, then they stand out. But the more lines of quilting that you add, the more the stitching goes into the background and it's not as noticeable. And so when you see this quilt, the stitching, it seems like texture. It doesn't jump out as stitching, but it's really great texture to this project. And so people like to feel it and they like um, to touch it. And it just has that really nice um, feeling to it. Now, I did learn some things about matchstick quilting. And when I was partway through, I honestly was starting to wonder what in the world I was thinking of and um, why I decided to do this. Because this is a big quilt. It's a bed size quilt. And I know in hindsight, it is obvious but when i started i hadn't really thought that through um that means there is a lot of stitching in it and so i started with stitching lines like one inch apart and then i came in and did half inch lines in the middle between those and then quarter inch and every time you go back then that it doubles the amount of stitching lines that you have to do. So one inch, and then when you go in half inch, then there's more, um, quarter inch is like two times that. And so every time you commit, I'm gonna do another set of lines, it is more and more. So this took forever to stitch. I did this all on my domestic sewing machine. Um, because it is just straight line quilting. It wasn't difficult to do, but that meant for days I was just straight line, bring it around another straight line, bring it around another straight line. So yes, it took forever to quilt this. Um, the other thing was that is obvious in hindsight, but it took a lot of thread. It took so much thread. I had 500 yards of thread, uh, spools of thread, and I went through um, a couple of them. I remember at one time, it was um, the Saturday of a long weekend. Monday was a holiday, and um, I was working, at, and I it was Saturday afternoon, and I was running out of thread. And I knew I wanted to work on this on the weekend, but I knew if I ran out of thread, then the store would not be open till Tuesday. And so it was like 4 p.m. And then I just suddenly kind of like ran. It's like, I need to go get thread right now. Um, so I just kind of ran out of the house and I said to my husband, it's like, I'm going to get thread. I'll be right back. And he thought I said bread. And he was wondering like, why is she running out to get bread? So I went to the store, got more thread, came back and was able to continue working on that for the long weekend. So there was a lot of thread. Um, the thread that I chose to do 
was a kind of expensive thread. So I did a little bit regret that because the thread in this project ended up being more expensive than the fabric that I used. Um, and an interesting thing about the thread, another thing is the color. So when I went in, I took the quilt top into the fabric store and I laid out some different um, colors of thread just to experiment, see what I wanted. So I tried a lot of the colors that were in here. I tried lime green, orange, yellow, some of the colors that you might think of. And then I randomly put one on that was kind of like a rusty brown. And I was surprised how much I liked that. And so that's actually the color of the background or the backing fabric. That's that color. This is the color of the thread. And so it's a, it works out surprisingly well. So um, that's why now whenever I'm trying to audition thread colors for quilting, I'll, I'll throw in a couple oddballs that I don't even think will work. I just randomly pick them because you never know what's going to be a nice surprise. So this was a good example of that. So that was something that I learned. Um, something else that again is obvious in hindsight is because this quilt has so much quilting and so much thread that makes it very heavy. Um, and it's also, it's pretty flat because it has so much stitching. And so if you like a quilt that's very heavy, then matchstick quilting will give that to you. Uh, but if you want a quilt that's more fluffy and light, then obviously this is not a good choice. So it is still cuddly. Um, it still uh, will drape, okay? It's not really stiff like some things that are quilted to death. Um, but it is very heavy for the size of it. So in all, I was pretty happy with how this quilt turned out. I like the design. It's fun to make. It's fun to make something that looks improv, even though I can't really do improv. Um, I like how it turned out, uh, but I did learn a bunch of lessons. So if you have any questions about this project, uh, feel free to ask them below and I'd be happy to answer them. For more quilting tutorials, patterns, and inspiration, be sure to check out evadastudio.com.